Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at some of the things that will help you level up your character a little bit faster when playing through The Division 2. I imagine that there are a lot of players like myself who are all about that endgame experience. You might be lacking in time to play, and you're looking for the best way to get to that endgame point. Well, that's what we are going to go through today. Now I know some people like to take their time and immerse themselves in the story. Um, I preferably like to go through the story at a decent pace as not to get behind in my leveling process. So I've got the strategy laid out of how to go through the story in the most efficient way, so to speak. So let's get to the first step. When you first start the game, you'll do an initial tutorial mission that, that basically just gets you to the White House. The very first thing that you want to do is go to the Quartermaster in the base of operations. You can find him on your left wing as you go through the main entrance. Talk to him and unlock some XP bonus perks. It's basically the first icon on the third row on the perk step. And these perks will give you some experience bonuses when doing specific things in the game. For example, like we've got one for headshot kills, for multi kills, for hitting weak points, that sort of stuff, even for staying alive a long time either alone or in a group. Now these bonuses aren't a crazy amount of experience, but unlocking these early is surely going to give you an extra level or two by the time you reach the end of the story, so you might as well pick them up now. Now I will say, unfortunately, the first time you arrive at the base of operations and you speak to the quartermaster, the game will force you to buy certain perks and skills with your shade tech. Now this isn't that big of a deal, just keep an eye out for more shade tech once you get done there. As soon as you get more, come back to the base of operations and get those XP bonus perks as soon as possible. Now once you get done checking out the base of operations, you should have the first storyline mission available to you to do. I would go ahead and do that, maybe get some shade tech that you might find in that mission, and then once you've done that, a few more other missions should become available to you that are in the world. So let's go ahead and talk about the different kinds of missions that you would get in this game and what kind of experience you would get from each mission. Now I will say the speed at which you level up is completely dependent on the order in which you do these missions. I know this sounds weird, but let me explain. Personally, in The Division 2, I think that there are three different types of activities or missions. I mean, there are more, but I'm just kind of putting them into their own little box or category for now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map here and discuss what falls into what category. So first up you have your main missions, the big storyline missions so to speak. And they have this big turquoise double hexagon as a logo on the map and that's how you know it's a main mission. It's kind of hard to miss because they are the biggest thing on the map, it's hard not to notice them. So this is your main missions. Secondly, you have your side missions, which also have a turquoise logo on the map, but these are much smaller and they're also pentagons and not hexagons, and it'll also say side mission when you hover over it. Thirdly, there's all the other stuff in the game, basically like the other open world stuff like control points, saving hostages, and the petty side activities that basically act like filler in the game. It's important to keep these three types of activities separated because the experience rewards for each of these mission types are very different and that's going to be important to keep in mind for leveling up. The main missions for example will always give you the same amount of experience no matter what point you're at while you're playing the game. These missions will unlock when you go to a settlement or something. These missions have a certain level requirement and you can either do them earlier, you can do them when you're at the required level, or you can do them much later, but no matter what you do, they will always give you the same amount of experience. For example, Jefferson Trade Center always gives you 4950 experience. And Viewpoint Museum, for example, always gives you 9750 experience. Now why do these differ? Well, that's because Jefferson Trade Center has NPCs that are level 4, and Viewpoint Museum has enemies that are level 6. And sure, if you level up your character past those levels, the NPCs will scale up with you as well. So here's an example. Jefferson Trade Center at level 4 awards 4950 experience for completing it. But say now I'm a level 7 character and I go to Jefferson Trade Center which is originally a level 4 mission, but because we're level 7 the enemies are now level 5, I think that's because enemies are no more than 2 levels below the level that you're at, which I think is correct but don't quote me on it. But even though I'm playing a level 5 mission, when I completed the storyline mission it still gave me the exact amount of experience which was 4950 experience. Now it's important to keep in mind that the side missions work very differently. 
The side missions always scale up with the player, which I guess the main missions do as well, but the side missions scale up to the exact level that the player is at. So for example, if you're a level 4 player, you do a side mission, that side mission will have NPCs that are level 4. But if you do the same side mission when you're a level 7, the NPCs will be at level 7. The big thing with the side missions is that the rewards that you get for completing those actually increase as well if you do them at a higher level. Side missions will always give you exactly 33% of the total experience that you need to level up. The difference with these open world missions is that the reward is much less than the 33% of the required experience needed for you to level up. It's more like closer to 10% or so, so it's not significant, but it can make a difference. So if you look at this and sum it up and think about it for a second, something becomes obvious pretty fast, and that is that you want to save these side missions, which give you a fat 33% of your required experience bar for later in your playthrough. Because leveling up early is not such a big deal without using these side missions. You really don't need that much experience to level up in the early stages of the game. So once you get to level 26, level 27, and maybe all the way up to level 30, you're gonna need a lot of experience to level up each time. And if you have a flat 33% of your level just because you have so many side missions left over, it's gonna be extremely helpful. And even potentially save you hours upon hours upon hours of running around and grinding around this open world random hostages and control points and just random red NPCs in the streets. So I'm sure we've all been there with different games, but you might look at this and say, well, okay, sure, I need more experience when I get to higher levels, but as I level up, I will also be fighting higher level NPCs for everything, which will give me more experience for killing those. Wouldn't it just be better to just level up as fast as possible so that I can fight higher level NPCs faster? Also, what about just replaying the main storyline missions? They seem to give a big chunk of experience each, so why not just play those on repeat? So let's go ahead and talk about both of those suggestions. First, the NPC thing. So sure, as you level up, you will fight higher level NPCs. And as you fight higher level NPCs, you get more experience for killing them. But the experience that you get for NPC kills, it scales much slower than the experience required to level up. For example, at level 2, I need 3900 experience to level up to level 3 and a normal red bar NPC gives me 25 XP. So if I wanted to level up by just killing the red bar mobs, which I really wouldn't do it, but for argument's sake, let's just say I did, right? So I would have to then kill 156 of them just to level up. And if I was to do the exact same thing to get from 7 to 8, which requires 25,650 XP, I would have to kill 513 of them. Because the difference between getting a kill of the red bar mob is 25 when I'm level 3 or level 2, it's now 50 when I'm level 7. And when you get to the end game where you start to need hundreds of thousands of experience points just to level up, and at that point killing red bar NPCs only gives you like 100 experience per kill. And no one wants to have to mind-numbingly grind killing thousands of random NPCs in the streets of DC. The second suggestion about replaying the storyline missions over and over and over again also doesn't work. The thing about story missions is that they do not give you XP for completing them after you've already completed them once, not even if you play those missions on hard mode. So what's the point of this? So while replaying the missions on hard mode might not give you XP for completing it, it does have a higher drop rate for high end loot which doesn't matter in the early levels because let's say you get a level 7 blue item and then a few hours later you're now level 12 and that level 12 item might be like green, it's already going to be so much better than the blue item that you got when you were level 7. So what is the strategy to level up fast? Well obviously since the main missions always give you a set amount of experience, no matter at what level you complete them, it's best to do these as fast as possible. So whenever you get an opportunity to do a main mission, you want to take it and it might even be worth to do these main missions when you're maybe one or two levels below the recommended level. Because these missions will give you a big boost in experience early on and which means that everything else in the game scales up faster and this gives you more experience for completing the other things. The second thing that you want to do that I already talked about earlier in this video is to avoid as many of the side missions as possible and actually level up just doing the main missions and then doing open world activities if all the rest of the main missions are too high of a level for you. The things that you can do are capturing control points and just going to the question marks on the map. 
You just want to try and kill as many NPCs as possible with these types of activities. That's why capturing control points is so good, because those usually cause a lot of NPCs to spawn, and as I mentioned earlier, leveling up from just killing NPCs is a lot faster when you're in the early stages of the game. So once you get into the mid game, which is like level 16, 17, 18, maybe even 19, that's when you want to start doing your side missions. It will seem like your character is leveling very slow compared to everyone else, but when you get to that mid late game where everyone is grinding out to get those last few levels, you will be able to catch up and maybe even overtake them to shoot straight up to level 30. So that's basically the idea behind it, and at the end of the day, you've done the same content as everyone else, it's just the order in which you've done the content has allowed you to level up a lot faster. There is one thing though that I want you to watch out for while doing these side missions, is that you never want to go and complete a side mission when you're about to level up. This is because the reward that you get for completing a side mission, as I said, is 33% of the experience that you need to level up, but that always takes in your current level. So for example, say you're about to level up and you need like 1000 XP to level up. Completing a side mission will give you 333 XP for completing it. Whereas if you had waited and did some open world activities to level up and save the side mission for the beginning of the next level, which say you needed 10,000 XP to level up, your reward for completing that side mission would now be 3,333 XP. So you can see how this definitely scales up and how it's more valuable to do these side missions at the beginning of a level rather than even like at the midpoint of it. The last tip I would recommend you do is to not deconstruct or sell your trash gear all the time. Sure, having the crafting materials or money to buy or purchase new and better gear is great, but until you're in the late game, it's really not worth it. The best way to make use of this extra gear is to donate it. As you progress through the game, you will discover settlements spread across the city. Each of these settlements will have assignments, most of which will require you to donate materials or even specific items like backpacks and weapons. Completing these assignments will not only reward you with blueprints to craft specific weapons or attachments, but you will also get a nice amount of XP as well, which then helps you level up faster, and it takes like 20 seconds to donate materials or the items, so you might as well do it while leveling up, right? And that's going to be it for the video. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching this as I have enjoyed making it, and if you did enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up. Otherwise, if not, drop a comment down below, let me know what you didn't like about it. I do always appreciate constructive criticism. Anywho, I hope you are all enjoying the game, and if you have any requests or things that you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments below and I will get right on it. Otherwise, if you're looking for more content, I am live on Twitch three days a week. I will leave um, the details for that in the description below. But otherwise, enjoy your week, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.